and continuing on in my series of Saturday Superlatives, I'm going to talk about the pass catchers, tight ends and wide receivers, and I pretty much have to start with Dylan Stoner, Stone, Dylan Stoner of Oklahoma State. Uh, Tylen Wallace was out, and the void was more than adequately filled. People always make sort of jokes, the whole future Patriot thing about white wide receivers who are tough and really good route runners. He's a little more than that, though. Uh, maybe not quite all the way to Jordy Nelson, but maybe somewhere between Austin Collie and Jordy Nelson. He just, he can be uncomfortable at times, which you don't really associate with that kind of guy, but he's more athletic than you think. I, I don't want to say, I'm not going to say sneaky athletic, but he's more athletic than you think. I won't be shocked if he runs in the very low four fives or maybe even gets down to four four nine four four eight. I, I'd be shocked if he doesn't jump about 35 or so inches. He's got strong hands. He's better after the catch than, once again, the stereotype would have you believe. He went crazy off. Eight catches, 247 yards, three touchdowns, and really was the player of the game. He's going to be a really good NFL player. Another guy who's, once again, sort of a uh, fits a certain mold, more like Troy Brown, if you are talking about uh, Patriots wide receivers, is Dwayne Eskridge. And Dwayne Eskridge at uh, Western Michigan is a terrific return specialist, but also is a really good wide receiver. And he's a guy that you can probably put in the wildcat. He's just a guy that you want to get the ball in his hands. Nine catches, 182 yards, and, sorry, 124 yards and a touchdown. And, once again, great after the catch, really sharp route runner, and a guy that, once again, knows how to find a spot in the zone. Uh, George Pickens, a guy that people have been sort of waiting for him to break out. Looks like that breakout is now coming, and I think JT Daniels' emergence has helped him. Five catches, 126 yards, and two touchdowns. And once again, he has all the physical stuff you want. He's, you know, he looks the part, as they say. Um, a guy who's speaking of emerging, a guy who's emerging at Iowa is Imar uh, Smith Marset. And they have a pretty plain Jane offense. We all sort of joke about how, you know, they have two kinds of vanilla in their offense vanilla and French vanilla. But when they do pass the ball, he is a heck of a target. Seven catches, 140 yards, a couple of touchdowns. And he's still, once again, the arrow's pointing up. He's still developing. Uh, Kadarius Tony is obviously more of a finished product. Uh, in defeat, he still was terrific. Nine catches, 180 yards, and a touchdown. And once again, you know, the easy comparison is, you know, it is an easy comparison, but it's sort of a, a somewhat apt comparison is Percy Harvin. Not quite as fast in a straight line. Percy was blazing fast. He's more of a, uh, a quick acceleration guy, but he'll probably run well enough to still be productive at the next level. Uh, we have to talk about Brevin Jordan. Six catches, 140 yards, and a touchdown. And he, once again, is one of the guys that looks the part. The classic, modern, you know, long, lean, probably was a terrific power forward in high school kind of tight end. And... We talked earlier about Coastal Carolina's offense, and once again, it's very run-heavy, but when they do throw it, Javon Hiley is dangerous. He had 11 catches, 138 yards, two touchdowns, and he, once again, is a guy that finds a way to be open. When You, you know that the ball is probably coming his way when they throw it, either here or lively. Uh, I think between the two of them, there's something like over 50% of the passing attack goes to them. I think 30% goes to, uh, to Hiley, and I think like 20 three point something percent goes to likely so they are over half between the two of them uh here's another guy that he's not flying underneath the radar because he's at usc and everyone notices usc football but there are so many receivers there you know uh you i'm on raw st brown is a guy a lot of people like and i'm a huge drake london fan but sort of quietly producing week in and week out is tyler bonds who's once again another real craftsman at the position Eight catches, 128 yards, and a touchdown. And like I said, he quietly can beat you. Uh, Tennessee has maybe found their solution at quarterback. And if that happens, you'll see Velas Jones Jr. begin to really assert himself as maybe the next really great uh, Tennessee wide receiver. He had seven catches, 125 yards, uh, two TDs. And once again, he's one of those guys that can be that sort of jump ball red zone guy, but also can work the middle, he can get deep, he can work you at all three levels. And another guy who's very versatile is uh, 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 Khalil Shakur at uh, Boise State. Another guy who I mentioned, Eskridge, who is 
damaging to you sometimes in the return game, but also can play slot and can play on the outside. Eight catches, 105 yards, and he's become uh, Bachmeyer's favorite target, and rightly so. Uh, Fresno State, I mentioned earlier, they have an underrated but really good passing attack. And I talked about the quarterback earlier. I have to talk about their best receiver, Jalen Cropper. Uh, 12 catches, 134 yards, a touchdown. Uh, he also had five carries for 38 yards. He is really good with the ball in his hands, and I, I want to watch more of him. And then I have to touch on, guy had one catch, but I have to touch on it because he was, uh, he looks so good. Just a freshman, and he might be, you know, at some point in all conference, and maybe an All-American tight end when he develops more. But Connor Kinslaw, you know, Debbie kids, if you're into, you know, that Debbie um, uh, fantasy football in college, watch out for him. One catch, 49 yards, one touchdown. If you throw the ball to him more, he'll keep doing damage. But amongst the pass catchers, the tight ends and wide receivers, those are my Saturday superlatives.